Welcome to this edition of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I want to talk a little bit about this new device I got in, um, this Esheen uh, DVR. So I got this off, I can't remember, Gearbest or Banggood, I'll have the link below anyway. Uh, it was like 17 bucks, so crazy cheap for this type of technology. And so what I want to do is a little bit of an opening and discussion of what my plans are to do with this and maybe maybe some plans that you could come up with too. So one of the things, as you guys know, is I, I've recently purchased um, a Hubzen uh, 501S. And with the controller, I have a video output um, and I need some way to record it. And, and one of the things I decided is what I'm going to do is take this little guy i mean look how tiny this is this is this is crazy tiny because this is uh 40 basically 40 by 30 by a little bit less than 10 uh millimeters in all direct directions and so it takes micro sd card and uh, basically you just kind of hit this button when you power it up and it starts recording or else I think you can also, I'm not 100% sure, but I think I read that you could set it to auto record on power on. Now, one of the key pieces with this is this is 5 volts. And so uh, you have to make sure you give it 5 volts, no more, no less. So one of the pieces I, I want to do is in the field, when I, I come up with this, is I want to use this 3.7 volt um, LiPo battery to power this, but this is 3.7 and this is 5 volts because one of the things, notice the size, even the battery is, is bigger than this. Um, so I wanted to come up with a very small package because again, I could have gone with some uh, other higher voltage solutions, but this is this is like, whoops, sorry, I want to compare this to this. This is like real overkill. And, and for the period of time that I'm filming, I don't need a huge you know long battery life so this is be more than enough to supply some substantial uh, battery life to this guy so what did I do I got this along with this um, this is a step up converter so long story short if I get it out of the bag here and this is this guy is just super tiny uh, this is and hopefully this will show up if not uh, maybe let me put it here so this takes in a 3.7 volt and it outputs 5 volts. Um, and I believe it's around 500 milliampere is the output. So my, my plan is, is to take the feed from this battery, plug it in here and take the output to power this device. Now this is so small, what I'm going to simply do is heat shrink it into the, in, into the power supply line. So I'm going to kind of split like this lead right here and then solder it in here and then heat shrink uh, put a piece of heat shrink tape over that and uh, because again it's got a number of DF13 style connectors you can see here it comes with a wad of connectors and then there's a number of interfaces on this side and we can see what they're all labeled here so I can arrange for the video input to come into here from the Hubson's controller. I can then power it with this. And then what I'm going to do is probably print up some sort of 3D case for this all uh, to plug in. And uh, so I can attach it probably by, by a Velcro or something to the back of the controller. And it would be a pretty lightweight solution. Um, I could probably also use something like this to pull power from the Hubzen's control and I may do that in the future and just build this right into the Hubzen but one of the pieces I wanted to do uh, this time around and experiment with is I can see a lot of different uses for this other than the Hubzen so that's why I didn't want to go the direct integration route of building it into the Hubzen case or uh, pulling power from this because I want to be able to attach this and used to create maybe a little bit more sophisticated ground station I've got a number of smaller uh, LCD monitors such as this one which magically appeared so kind of long story short I could attach this back here and um, have the have video out going to this monitor as well as being able to record it and have another ground station and actually this is hugely cost effective in and one of the things I wish I would have kind of known this a little bit um, in advance I probably still would have bought that one the, the uh, sky fly or whatever sky zone 700 ground station that I have because uh, it's a nice unit uh, was a little over a hundred bucks 
but I've already got a receiver. I've already got this monitor. So really my sunk cost of building a ground station without diversity would be in 17 bucks for this module. And, and I think this other thing was like a dollar. I think it was like five bucks for five of them. So it was like a dollar for this up converter. So this would have been a really effective, cost-effective solution um, to build a ground station. So anyways, um, I'm thinking about doing, again, some interesting things here. Like uh, one of the things on my list is a, is a tracking ground station or an active tracking ground station. So again, project for the future. So anyways, wanted to share this with you guys because I thought for 17 bucks, this is really a neat option. You can mix it up to build your own ground station. Just add a receiver. And again, you can get the receiver super cheap off of eBay. I'll put some links below too for those. And uh, uh, most people already have them. And again, I've got a ton of these laying around from other projects because these were like super cheap. I think I ended up buying a bunch of these for around 20 bucks a piece or something at a time for a project. And so I have them laying around. Now, they're just regular VGA uh, resolutions. They run off of 12 volts. And here what I could do is um, they do have other versions of this where I can step it down to 5 volts. Not a big deal. And if I probably look in here, I can probably take 5 volts out of inside here also. So a lot of different options to build up uh, different ground stations. So I'll definitely keep you posted on the build. The first build of this is going to go for the Hubson 502. 501s so i want to be able to, to uh, record the screen because the other thing i'm going to do is try taking that controller apart and finding if there's an analog video out with the overlay uh telematrics data on it and from the os from the internal controllers ost so i'll keep you posted on that one too because i think that would be really cool to get that overlay so anyways uh hopefully you found this interesting if you did give it a big thumbs up uh, subscribe button is going to be coming up over there because this is really a cool device. And uh, hit me up in comments below. Maybe you have one of these. Maybe you've done some projects. Hey, I'd like, love to hear about it below because uh, maybe I can replicate some of them or uh, share them with others on the channel. That's what it's all about. And so, hey, we'll see you later. Cheers.